Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. Uh, Maryland, though, earns a big road win at UCLA. I think this UCLA team has very serious questions right now, but anytime you can get 37 points on 13 for 19 shooting from Jameer Young, I think you're feeling pretty good about your turfs. Isn't that right, T.O.? Yeah, I think you are, but let's keep in mind that UCLA team is young, and I, I'm not sure if I'm more impressed with that or the fact that you know UCLA was able to at least hang around in the second half. That, that's an incredibly young team, and both teams struggling to score. And then on top of that, you get you get a big game from Jameer Young. Hopefully, that manufactures some confidence for not only him but for the rest of that squad. Uh, Kevin Willard, think about this, Greg. That's a conference game next year, Maryland. <laughs> UCLA. You tell me how that makes sense. I'm still trying to figure all this nonsense out. But uh, no, it's uh, this UCLA team. They're, they're bound for problems. This is going to be a hard year in Los Angeles. Mick Cronin. He's going to. They're going to take some lumps. But I think next year and the year after UCLA, if they can hold on to guys, and we all know that's difficult. If they can hold on to guys, UCLA is going to be a problem. It's just a matter of kind of getting these guys to play together quicker. And I'm going to be honest with so many European guys coming in and coming from overseas. It's a, it's a huge adjustment. The, the college game is much more physical. It's fast paced. It's much uglier. You don't necessarily rely on the right reads. You rely on guy that can make some shots. So there's a lot of differences with this game and it, you, you're relying on a lot of young pieces. I think UCLA is in trouble this year. I think it's going to be kind of a tough, it's going to be a tough season all around. And Mick, Mick talked about, well, do I want some older transfers? Sure, we all do, but I just, they went elsewhere. Well, now you're dealing with a bunch of European freshmen that are having a hard time kind of adjusting to American college game. And while they are very skilled, that physicality is different. That speed is different. And Maryland uh, brought, uh, brought the rugged today, and it was difficult for UCLA to keep up with. Jarrell, I want to take you back to November, uh, November 20th to be exact. UCLA in the Maui Invitational is taking on your Marquette Golden Eagles. That was a two-point ball game. I, I mean, Marquette <laughs> emerges victorious in the game, but Marquette to me is a top five team in the country, as I said earlier in the show. UCLA then played Chaminade, blew them out, played Gonzaga, another team I think is a very good basketball team, lost by four points. Like I, I'm watching UCLA in their current form and the struggles they've had in the last 10 days. I, I just have this faint memory of how competitive they were with some of the best teams in the country in the Maui Invitational. What happened from then to now? I'll tell you what, they looked a hell of a lot better than they than they do now in, uh, out in Maui. And, 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 you know, with those tournaments, you never really get a full feel. I'm not sure if it was just the atmosphere that it was a tournament, you know, kind of the feast week thing. But uh, you know they just look they they look like a lot a lot more competitive team than they are right now and obviously uh, just going off what Mick Cronin does and I'll say this they still are uh, statistically wise the best defensive team in the Pac-12 and like and they're holding opponents to uh, 61 points a game so that's kind of the thing that they hang their hat they hang their hat on but right now like To said they're young. They're young and they got a a, a a full slate Euro League roster over there with a ton of guys from all over the place, France, Turkey, Spain, uh, and 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 that, and that causes for an adjustment period. And this is coming from somebody who's did it the other way, you know, coming from over here to going over there. It takes time to adjust and get yourself settled in and feel comfortable before you can start focusing on the main thing, which is kind of the uh, you know the games and basketball. But right now. Uh, for UCLA, kind of the only bright spot uh, that I will say to them, and I'll send a major shout out to him, is has has been uh, Sebastian Mack. Uh, he he's a freshman guard, and he's been he's been dynamite for them. And obviously, I think he's going to be a guy that they kind of have in the fold with some of those other guys who are going to eventually figure it out and come along and get comfortable and realize just how really good of a situation that they have it in that they have uh, there in UCLA, and they'll come along as well. And I'm sure Mick Cronin and those guys will do the job on the recruiting trail or, or the transfer portal to get some other pieces around them. But that kid is going to be really good going forward. Uh, he's got good DNA. He's a Chicago kid as well, too. Dad, uh, Sam Mack, who 
spent some time played in the NBA as well too. So you know he's got a good, a really good lineage. But I've seen a lot out of him early on. But Maryland took it to him tonight. They got an early lead. Uh, they got after it, and uh, and Jameer Young was uh, he was dynamite. I think he started off seven for eight from the field. He made like his first four threes or something like that. Uh, and, and he never looked back in route to a 37-point night. But let's not be mistaken. It wasn't a whole lot of help after that. So it took every bit of that. And UCLA made a little bit of a run there at the end as I'm sitting here watching the TV. So, uh, you know, it's going to be – I think it's going to be some a, a lot more tough sledding for UCLA. But uh, Maryland got a good one. I'm sure a feel-good win tonight on the road. So The good thing is they play Oregon State next. So it's at least at least like they'll be able to like, they'll, they'll be able to like get their get their bearings about them because hey look they've lost because four in a row. Yeah, they, they've lost four hey, in a that's, row. That's they, play, they play at a snail's pace. Like let's not keep in mind. Let's not forget. Like UCLA's always had talent, even last year in the last three four years. Like they've always. always had talent, and they still played slow. So that that's going to affect and skew some of their defensive numbers. But it's a team that's struggling to score, and it's a team that's struggling with physicality and finding consistent options offensively. Adam Bona, and he's an Amari Sotomayor comparison, but he's not there skill-wise. Amari could step out and shoot it 15 to 18 feet. Bona's not doing that right now. And they just don't have enough. They need, they need to hit the transfer portal. They need to get a couple of older guys. And it, it's, it's a – it's tough for them right now. And I think the young kid, the Spanish, the Spanish kid, oh, Ade Mara, like he's not going to hang around long enough, but his best basketball is going to be wherever he's extending the defense out, wherever he's hitting backdoor cutters. He's doing a lot more things with a much more open floor. So he's going to be a better NBA player than he is a college player right now. College is brute force and physicality and athleticism. When you get to the pros and you're that big, you have to have those things and those things will catch up but they'll catch up to him when he's 26. You, Mick Cronin's not going to see him when he's 26. So, like, his best game is way out in front of him. And thank God they play Oregon State next. <laughs> yeah, Stefanovic so, is really <laughs> struggling as well, too. He's, yeah, he's yeah, shooting sure. overall 35% from the field, and this is a guy that they kind of were looking to rely on and make shots consistently for them offensively. So that's a big part of it too. And I, and, and this is coming from me. I've seen him the last couple of years. The kid can shoot. I know he can shoot. I don't know what's going on with him right now, but he's just in a little bit of a rut. But he'll be better at some point. So that'll help him out a lot more, just giving those guys another guy that they could depend on to consistently make shots uh, in, throughout the course of game. So thank you for watching the Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, Hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field 68 content.